Jepang. Hello everyone and thank you for watching the video. Some of you may have already seen the first coral insert video I did about a year and a half ago. Uh, that video was my first attempt at building a custom insert and needless to say I learned a few lessons and have a better grasp of what I did correct and what I did wrong. So hopefully this will benefit you because this time I want to give a better detailed explanation of what I do during the process. But I want to make it very clear that I'm, I'm not a professional so I'm not passing this off as a how-to video. I just want to try to explain as best as possible what I'm doing so that you can make your own conclusions on how to approach your own project. There's a couple reasons I decided to practically tear down the entire tank and start over uh, with what's a very long process. For one, I was never able to get my skims skimmer to, to work consistently. And part of this problem may have been caused by the fact that uh, it was very overrated for this tank size and it had a very small bio load in the tank. Once I had a couple fish in the tank for about six months, I added one more fish that brought a little something extra with it and killed off everything within a week. So I was left with an empty tank and an underperforming skimmer and an insert that every time I looked at it, I thought about how much better I could have done. So a couple days later, I started draining the tank. In case you didn't see the first video I made, this insert was made from a two-part foam mixture. The foam was okay, but really ended up limiting the control over the texture of the base rock and the overall shape and features. This resulted in what looked like a pretty smooth surface with minor peaks and valleys, and that's not really what I wanted. Since I siliconed the insert to the bottom of the tank, it wasn't really easy to remove. I ended up using an oscillating multi-tool to cut sections of the foam to remove it piece by piece. It was a pretty tight fit, but I had to climb into the tank in order to get the bottom portions out and give it a good wipe down to make the tank look new again. To get started with our insert here, I'm going to make a form to build the entire structure around. And this form is basically going to be the size of my center overflow. Uh, that way when we're done, it's going to be a little bit larger actually, and that way when we're done we can just slip it over the overflow pretty easily. I'm going to start off with some scrap wood here. I believe it's a half inch plywood. Uh, rip the pieces that I need and then we're going to miter them, all four of them, all together so we get uh, the exact same height and make it easier on us when we go to nail it and stand the form up upright when we're working on the project. Now we've got our pieces of wood cut for our column, we can go ahead and start assembling them. Uh, you'll see here I'm going to use some corner clamps. These make it easy for you to make sure that uh, you know, you've got 90 degree angles all the way around and that when we stand this column upright, it'll be exactly 90 degrees to the table and our entire column or insert that we build around it will be square. Uh, now when you're using uh, brad nails to assemble this, you want to get the nail length just right. So you want it to go about a quarter of an inch into the wood piece. It's not going to make it you know, really strong. You can put about six or seven nails in there and you'll be fine, but we want it to be a little easy for us to pry open uh, from the middle of the insert once we have it built and we're trying to remove these wood panels. So now we've got it all nailed together, it's perfectly square, we can stand it upright and be ready to start building our plumbing around it, or the actual structure, and you'll see I'm going to use some PVC for that. To lay out the structure of what I want this coral insert to look like, I'm going to use PVC pipe to build a skeleton that I can use to mold the plastic around and you know basically create some general rock features. Um, use half inch PVC pipe or you can use three quarter inch, doesn't really matter. Buy a bunch of T's and 90 degree angles, you can use those to make a lot of different uh, features for it. And just start cutting and, and going at it. Uh, I didn't have a plan going into it, you just go along, create as you go. You can see here I'm going to build some pieces, cut them off, take it down, rebuild it. Um, so don't be afraid to screw up, there's really no one way to do this, it's completely up to you. So I'm going to continue to build these, this PVC structure and in here it might get a little confusing, I'm about to show you that I'm actually going to do some real plumbing in there as well so we can get ourselves a closed loop circulation here. Uh, built into the insert, make it functional as well. Also you can see me using zip ties, and basically just drill a hole through the piping, tie a zip tie to it, maybe a coupling or a 90 degree elbow, 
or a T, and we're gonna completely cover that with plastic later. So you can use anything you want that's laying around that wouldn't be toxic to the tank, um, but really this stuff's gonna be completely encapsulated by the plastic as it is. So I just attach random spots, put some of these couplings on there just so the, the fish would have somewhere to hide, really. And it makes a cool little feature once we get the plastic on and it, everything starts coming together. For this last bit of plumbing, I'm going to build a closed loop circulation system for the tank. Getting flow around the bottom of the tank was one of the biggest oversights from the last insert. I ended up having to mount small pumps that were pretty bad eyesores. So this time, I'll just run the plumbing through the insert and I'll place the pump in the overflow to pump the water from the overflow down to the bottom of the tank where the PVC exits through a lock line check valve and a nozzle. My original design that you're watching had intake lines about midway up the insert but I changed my mind to using the water that's already in the overflow. And here's the basic flow of the CLS uh, as shown by my amazing finger pointing. To get started, I will cover a scrap piece of plywood with tin foil to place the form on. Instead of using a foam, this time I'm going to use a two-part plastic called Smoothcast 322 mixed with Urofil 11. The Urofil is used as a thickening agent that is mixed directly into the two-part mixture. You can do a little or a lot in order to get whatever consistency you want. For this project, I found that a 1 to 1 to 3 ratio is just right, uh, and that's one part of both plastics and three parts of the Urofil. Measure out the two parts of plastic and three parts of the filler and mix it together in a good sized container. Uh, give yourself plenty of room to mix manageable batches of plastic. And this small bucket that you see right here, it was just right. It gives me enough to work with, uh, but not too much that it starts reacting while I'm trying to apply it. And this ratio gives the mixture a consistency that you could compare to mashed potatoes, uh, as you can see right here. I start by applying the plastic mash to the base of the insert and working my way around the entire form. Once this base reacts and sets up, I can lay it down and all the plumbing will be cemented in from the base. Then I can start applying the plastic to all sides and work my way around the PVC rock formations. The material is pretty easy to work with uh, as a mash, but after about 8 to 10 minutes it starts to get the reaction going pretty well and, and the material starts to heat up. At this point it's pretty hard to work with because it becomes a lot more sticky. Now, this is where your batch size really matters. One of the nice things about doing it this way is you have complete control over the shape and overall texture of the base rock structure. And once you've applied a batch of plastic you can use a piece of rock to press into it and give it a little more realistic texture. Compared to the foam from the first insert, this plastic gives a much better realistic look and a lot more control. Once I have all the sides of the insert covered, I go back and fill in certain areas to erase the impressions of plumbing and to add any other features that I come up with. When applying the plastic in mash form, you end up with a lot of very sharp points just from touching the surface as you're applying it. Uh, so it's really important to use a piece of rock and rub it all over the insert to remove all the sharp points. Now that the base rock of the insert is finished, we're ready to start painting and attaching corals. But first let's take a look at the process of sculpting with clay, creating molds, and pouring plastic castings of corals for the insert in this next video.